feeling at heart of instinct. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about, um, and we're going to talk about it through a song, which is one of my favorite songs. And I am Deborah Hansen Conant. I am here with Kathleen Wiley. Um, Kathleen is a Jungian psychoanalyst. I'm a composer and a performer. We both play the harp. And so we call this Jung at Harp. And it's all about continuing a conversation that started years ago when we started exploring these areas of life and then bringing that conversation to you so that you can be part of that conversation and so that we can have that conversation with you. So each week what we've been doing is taking a song, either a song that I've written or a song that is meaningful to me, and looking at that song and what um, and Kathleen either um, analyzes it in, in, you know, sort of a Jungian analysis, or we just look at what it is and what it kind of shows us. And so today we wanted to look at the song, Cindy, Cindy. So before we even start, Kathleen, is there anything that you want to say as I sing this song to kind of bring it into my, um, you know, what you might want me to bring into my thoughts and what you might want our listeners to bring into their thoughts? Yeah, so for those of you who may be joining us for this series for the first time, in Jungian analysis, we often work with myths and fairy tales and folk tales as being symbolic pictures of processes that go on in our own psyche. And so that for those of you who may work with your dreams and look at the meaning of your dreams, we apply those same principles to stories. And so that's what DHC and I are doing with the songs that she has um, either composed or set to music on the harp and looking at what they mean to us. So I would invite you, the listener, viewer, and you and myself, as we hear this, to pay attention to our own internal revelry. And by that, I mean what emotions get evoked, what feelings in your body come up, and what images come into your mind, because those help you learn the nuances of what's going on inside of you. Beautiful. Um, I, I'll, as you were talking, I also realized that I had not set up our sound. Um, I had forgotten mm -hmm. to do that today, but let me just, um, so if anybody is having trouble, hearing um if you could just well i don't know if we'll see it but why don't i just sort of start seeing it singing this song um has a, a varied past and i think kathleen will talk about that afterwards um and if kathleen you might you might want to mute while i'm singing yeah and i'm going to take my picture off so they see you more oh okay great idea let me see how i can do that all right okay so this song First, I want to say one of the one of the versions that I heard of this song later on in life was very, very body. And I didn't know any of that as a child. So my I had two two different parts of my family, like we all do. And in both parts of the family, music was really, really important. But the way that each part of the family engaged with music, was completely different. So on my mother's side, uh, Russian Jews, music was this uh, this um, this great thing, this 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 thing that could take you to the heights of life. And to be a great musician was as as meaningful as being a doctor or a lawyer. To be a great musician in my family, and to be a trained musician. But in my father's side of the family, which is many generations of Swedes in this country, in the US, music was something completely different. And my grandmother, Edith, said it the best. She said, she said, people have to sing. People have to sing. And someone has to keep them together. And that's why I play the piano. So she had a very utilitarian, way of experiencing music and this was a song from her so my different songs came from different sides of the family and she used to put me into the wheelbarrow and she would wheel me down to the garden and she would sing this song and it had only one verse and it went like this i wish i was an apple hanging on a tree 
Every time my Cindy passed, she'd take a bow of me. Get along home, Cindy, Cindy. Get along home, Cindy, Cindy. Get along home, Cindy, Cindy. I'm gonna marry you someday. And I loved that song. And I loved singing that song with her. I loved singing the chorus with her. But there were no other verses. And I wondered, why would somebody sing, you know, get along home, Cindy, Cindy, get along home, Cindy, Cindy, get along home, Cindy, Cindy. I'm going to marry you someday. Why would those two ideas like go away, but remember that I, I love you and I want to be with you? And, and, and I, I'm torn. I kind of want to sing the body verse now, just so you understand that there is this, um, that there can be so many different sides to love. So let me just sing that body verse now, which is, oh, Cindy had religion. She had it once before. She had it with the preacher's son right on the chapel floor. Get along home, Cindy, Cindy, gotta get along home. Cindy, Cindy, get along home, Cindy, Cindy, I'm gonna marry you someday. So in that verse, in that version, get along home, I'm going to marry you. It just seems like deceit. Like, yeah, right, I'm going to marry you. Fat chance is not going to happen. But as I started singing this song and looking for love in my life and looking for the meaning of the song, I began to write my own verses to it. And so I'm going to sing those verses. Start from, I'll start from the beginning again. Well, I wish I was an apple hanging on a tree. Every time my sin passed, she'd take a bite of me. Get along home, Cindy, Cindy. Get along home, Cindy, Cindy. Get along home, Cindy, Cindy. I'm gonna marry you someday. I wish I was, I wish I was, I wish I was, I wish I was a waterfall falling in the stream. And when my Cindy falls asleep, I want to run into a dream. Get along home, Cindy, Cindy, get along home, Cindy, Cindy, get along home. Cindy, Cindy, I'm gonna marry you someday. And I wish, 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 I wish I was a feather quilt in a winter storm. I wanna throw my arms around. And I would keep you warm, so warm. Get along home, Cindy, Cindy. Get along home, Cindy, Cindy. Get along home, Cindy, Cindy. I'm gonna marry you someday. I'm gonna marry you someday.
Come on, and Kathleen, thank you. So it became this really romantic song for me. And it also became this connection with my grandmother. And as I kept writing verses, they get deeper and deeper into the meaning of love for me. So the first was just, I want to be a waterfall, you know, to fall into your dreams. And the second, I want to be a feather quilt, you know, to, to cover you in a, in a winter storm. But the, but, the, but the final one, you know, I want to be a footbridge to help you in your troubled times to get mm -hmm. to the other side. And, and, and that was the verse that connected both, you know, my future or, or love in, in the present with my love in the past, you know, with the connection with her. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so your thoughts on that? Well, I just want to know, was your grandmother Edith your father's mother or your mother's yeah. mother? And my grandmother Edith was my father's mother. Your and father's she, mother. She was a very, okay, she was a very practical person. And my, my parents split up when I was really little, but my mother and I went to live with my father's mother uh -huh. after they split up. And, and my father's mother so. Um, my mother in getting a, a teaching credential. So my, my, my you know, there, there were these very, very strong women in my family who supported each other, whether it was for the, the best <laughs> or, the, or, the, or the worst reasons. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but they supported each other. I mean, there was in some way that sense of being a footbridge for one another. They loved right. each other enough to help them connect to the next step in life. Right. I mean, I know my mother said, yeah. saw it as, um, what is it, mendacity? Um, she was like, yeah, right. She supported me through um, getting a teaching credential so that she wouldn't have to worry about her son sending me um, alimony. <laughs> but we don't, and that's really interesting because um, there's a this whole idea of doing the right thing for the wrong reason that still has the mm -hmm. impact um, still has a positive impact is also, uh, as I'm saying that, I realize this is a story that's also a big one in my life. Something yeah, I'm just absorbing what you said. <laughs> yeah, and we talked about this as we were talking about this tune. We were talking about, um, like, when I saw these really bawdy, tawdry verses of this beautiful song, I was was, like, shocked. Like, how could someone sing a song like this? And yet the, the other question is, how could I take a song, how, yet how could I experience a song that had such a, a, a tawdry past, as I thought, and turn it into a love song? How can we take that? You know, so there's the, I don't know, why did we write the distortion of instinct? <laughs> Uh, well, actually, you 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 came up with that term because, or I came up with it from, out of what you said because you started talking about the history of this piece. So, do you want to talk a little bit about that because that's really meaningful in terms of our relationships to ourselves yeah. and our initial intentions in life, and then what we end up doing and how we end up expressing ourselves. Yeah. It's, so, I'm going to preface that by saying I think one of the things you have modeled for us with this song and you have shared this morning is how you took something, this tune that meant one thing to you and that had a felt association vis a vis your experience of your grandmother pushing you in the wheelbarrow singing to you, which evokes feelings of connection and warmth and safety. And you'd heard this lyric that was incongruent with the felt sense you had of the tune. And so you changed the lyrics to express what you felt internally and the presence of the tune. And it just makes me think about how many disconnects we all have in our life <laughs> where 
things get paired together that really don't fit. And in this case, you knew those lyrics did not fit with the song's energy and what you felt in your association to it. So you rewrote the words. Um, it's interesting, and in doing my research, I found Elvis put his own lyrics and recorded the song, and his lyrics were, Cindy, Cindy, come on home to me. That, oh, was, wow. that was the chorus he put was, Cindy, Cindy, come on home to me. So, um, yeah. is this the same song? He was singing the same it's song. It's the same song. He took oh, wow. Cindy, Cindy, and put his own verses to it back in the um, late fifties. So this is really beautiful. I mean, what I'm hearing is that where I, I, again the distortion. I, I keep going back to that title and being like, yeah. "What the heck does that mean? Why do we choose <laughs> that?" But the just oh boy even if we're given something that may seem silly or that may seem um that may even be negative because who knows what you know if 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 our exp we can change our experience of something and we can change the words and we can even change the music because i mean initially i would learn it dun, 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 dun. You know, that's how I heard it. But but to to be the romantic, to to ex, to experience the romance that I wanted to experience with this tune, I changed. You know, And it's not just the change in the mood of the music, but literally the change of the harmony to add romance. So I think that's maybe what I would have loved to call this this episode. How do we connect to the romance of our lives? Mm. How what do we need to change in order to connect to the romance? Maybe I'll just change it right now. <laughs> you sure can. Huh. What we have to do, though, is we have to be able to see the distortions of our instincts. For instance, the primary instinct of the desire for human connection, of eros, of that sense of love, of which romance and sexuality is one expression, but which also is equally as powerful with that bond between you and your grandmother, Edith. So... If we are going to reconnect to the romance of our life or our music, we have to get ourselves freed from the distortions that have gotten connected, the mix-ups that have happened. Um, you know, I just want to say, because I'm married to a professional all-time musician, <laughs> that um, the history of Cindy Cindy, the earliest history of it being in publication was in um a book of songs in 1904 put out by Anne Virginia Culbertson, and it was a collection of slave tunes. And um, the original words actually were um, sound to me. I don't know for sure if this is the story, but of someone going up to fight the war to free the slaves. And he was saying to his Cindy, I'll come home and marry you one day. I'm going to go to Richmond to end this war. And so, um, that's the traditional history. And John Lomax, who was a ballad collector, um, tracked the early versions to that um, actually here in North Carolina. So, yeah. So it's interesting how something that goes as far back being documented in the early 1900s has evolved and what people have done with the tune. And to your point about the music, whether it's slowed down for the romance or it's sped up to be body, is that those things affect the emotion and the felt state in our body. And mm. if we are going to find the romance, we're going to, we're going to love our energies. We have to find the resonances, the vibrations, the words, the music that help us feel that, that help us experience that. 
So that's really fascinating because you know um, what you're saying about the history of it and the um, the intention of the the original of the original singer whatever um, or whatever they found as the original um, that that I believe that was transformed transmitted to me just through the juxtaposition of those two lines yes. go ho go home and I'm gonna marry you someday. Yeah. And, and then finding my own meaning for that, finding how, how do I translate that harmonically and, and, and lyrically? Um, oh, this is a great, great, great uh, question here. I love this. So Reham is saying, great greetings, ladies. Would you kindly define romance? Is it necessarily about a connection between man and woman? Oh my God, no, not <laughs> at all. Um, romance to me um, is, I, is, is, a, is an experience of my life, whether my life is a tawdry experience or whether it is a, uh, an experience of, of lies or whether it is an experience of what I have to do or whether is it a, it's an experience of romance and beauty and, and, and light and, and magic. So for example, to me, when the even though it's really fun, you know, oh, Cindy had whatever I say, I wish I was an apple hanging on a tree. I mean, that's fun and that could be romantic, but to me, from my sense of romance, there's um, I feel more romantic when I'm even if I'm not singing the words, the, la 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 la. When it open, when it when my life opens up to gather me in, and when I allow my life to open up to gather me and to gather others and to gather it, itself in, that is what is romance to me. Mm -hmm. So romance, romancing a song would be could be many different things on different days, but mm -hmm. um, but for me right now, the the the, the harmony the. The richness of the harmony and the and it's not that it's that it's become indistinct but it's be but when i change it from la 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 whoops Ooh, i like that <laughs> la, 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 la. that was kind of cool that was major and minor when i change the way that i'm engaging with it and i change the harmony to something that is not quite so it's this and then it's this and then it's this and then it's this which can also be wonderful, but this is not quite as clean. There are more subtleties and more places I can play with it and engage with it. And to me, that's romantic. And I then feel romantic about it. And I've literally spent my life finding those harmonies in, with which I feel romantic because ever since I was a kid, I'm looking for the romance in the stories that I'm telling myself and then writing music with them. So I don't know if that answers, but romance is, a. I truly believe it is a way of life and that we can engage with. And I think that when I put these words, the final words to that piece, that romance was a romance with my grandmother, a, roman a, a romance of that part of my life. So and and um and and Kathleen, sorry, I was like right in there. <laughs> no, I'm glad you did. I mean, I, I think what I would add is that for me, um, romance is inviting something into its fullness and wholeness, and 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 an inviting of experiencing, whereas you know seduction is about inviting someone to get something from them what you want from them and i think there's a difference and, and even with the song you can play a song as if you're seducing it you know trying to make it what you want it to be or you can romance it and dance with it and flow with it and become one with it so um that's part of how i think of romance I, I want to ask you something about that because at, at, at my last show somebody said something about when i there's also a, I'm not going to probably do this here, but if I were alone, I would be singing this song. I mean, I wish I, 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 I wish 
I wish I was a footbridge Oh, across a river wide I want to help you, I want to help you I want to help you In your troubled times Get to the other side Oh, 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 oh. get along home Cindy, Sandy, get along home Cindy, Cindy, get along home Cindy, Cindy, oh, you know I'm gonna marry you I'm gonna marry you I'm gonna marry you someday <laughs> so for me i the song provides an opportunity to experience and something which i may or may not feel safe doing in performance but i know that in my last performance right before the pandemic I allowed myself to go there in a piece and and a man came up to me afterwards and he said it was like you were praying and I was mm -hmm. like, okay, interesting. So what are the elements of praying that are different or the same? Um, so when you were talking about seduction, um, seduction has a, a, an end goal and you know what it is and you, I mean, you think, I, I don't know, I'm just making this up. Um, but, um, but prayer is a conversation, I, I think. And, and, and what I love you will know more about this than me. What I love is that the, the song opens itself up for a conversation about love. Mm. That's what I love. Yeah. And, you know, I think part of the difference is that prayer has no goal except to receive what comes in the present moment. I see. And that's a very different state than working for an outcome, performing or seducing. Right. You know, it's about opening. It's about being willing to surrender to the experience in the moment and receive. And so th that, you know, and again, we get scared of surrendering to our own experience because our instinctive responses have been rejected right. we've been shamed for it we've been made to feel right. guilty all of those other you know religious right. overlays of badness right and the minute i'm singing like that the way i would when i was alone i'm like am i singing too loud is this bad is somebody not going to like this and and, and yet yeah. i'm i'm engaging just like you said i can't remember exactly how you said but i can go back and listen to this <laughs> um and let's pull up i just want to pull up uh whoops i keep showing them and hiding yeah. Beauty and gentleness seems like a good definition. Although sometimes romance I know is bombast. I mean, <laughs> romance has so many, uh, yes, beauty and, 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 and being, and, in, and being willing to see the beauty in anything. I, I'm good, I could go on and on. Let's bring JT's comments up here. In music, romantic style means letting go of former mm. conventions and harmonic rules allowing music to express music and sometimes writing music to express the emotions of the lyrics, which would be for me what my life is about, writing music to express the emotions of the lyrics. Because I'm, music theater is, is my life. I mean, whether I'm on stage playing you know, with a symphony, I'm still, telling a story and the music is t is allowing me to tell that story so the music gives all the underpinning that we feel but that you know we're just saying words but then the music gives that feeling now i'm embarrassed carry on kathleen you know i just want i love jt's comment too because it, this is truly what it means to romance one's own life is we have to let go of former conventions and harmonic rules i.e we have to let go of what we've learned we should do what we've learned we shouldn't do what we've learned we ought to do in order to really be able to live what we know in our heart mind and soul we want and, so and letting to, go of former conventions is is true across the board, not just in music. <laughs> I want to jump in on what you said about what we know, because I also think that by engaging in, like when I engage in this kind of playing, um, 
I don't know what I know until I actually start expressing it. And even, even this conversation, which we started out as, what do we call it? The distortion of instinct. And then, <laughs> and then, and then I realized that it's about romancing mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. But I couldn't even get there except through distortion of instinct, but whatever. <laughs> But I think, again, it's a beautiful example of the transformation that happens on a feeling level when we romance whatever it is that's in the moment, i.e. we stay in relationship to it in a way that we can feel a deeper connection. We can feel what's underneath the surface that we're thinking, feeling, desiring, etc. Yeah, let's open up this let's open up this comment a little bit more. In music romantic style means letting go of former conventions mm -hmm. and harmonic rules and and we can say that harmonic rules just for the moment. Let's just say that harmonic rules connected us to a, a certain understanding of music and it was combined with I I don't know I don't know how to define harmonic rules, but um but can I define for our life, the harmonic yeah. rules might be whatever the normal defensive ways you've maintained status quo in your life, <laughs> that the harmonic rules you have to let go of are these adaptive patterns that keep you stable, but really no longer serve you because the stabilities become the box or the cage or the prison. Yes. And, um, I, I also like that it's a, har a harmonic convention or harmonic rules that actually were followed by all music, probably not all musicians, but they were the understood rules of the time that, that, mm -hmm. that are, un and what I love about what harmony to me, it, um, it gives the, the atmosphere of what we're doing. So that means that if everyone is following the same harmonic rules, they're kind of creating a sense of like, this is how, uh, this is truth. It's like a, this is truth. Boy, this is like a really deep conversation about what harmony is as we accept it as a society. And that's one of the things that's so powerful about the blues is that the blues comes in and changes that as well. But we're not going to go there today. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about the romantic style. Um, <laughs> well, and again, I think that what you're talking about, the harmonic rules that allow people to <laughs> play music together because everybody's going in the same way, translate out into the family rules, into the societal rules, into collective rules and norms of how we move. And we need those, but we also need times of being freed from those. So, and you know, you just said something and, and, and um, JT also said something that I'll bring up in a second, but you said from playing together, like we do need those rules I mean, or guidelines, we need to agree on guidelines to whatever they are in order to play together. But this is going to be really interesting what JT brings mm -hmm. up next. He talks about like Chopin did in his music. And one of the things that's really, um, I don't know the history of music, but I know that Chopin is not playing, sitting down and playing folk music with other people. Mm -hmm. He's playing the piano in a very expressive style. So it's very interesting. I don't know how, you know, what the history of society is, but the individuation as individuals start to express themselves more individually. I don't know what that has to do with, rom you know, romantic um, music, but I do know <laughs> that in relationships, being willing to express ourselves and be vulnerable um, I, I just heard a great quote yesterday and I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, but it was about that, you know, the embarrassment of actually sharing ourselves mm -hmm. that, that we can, that that's what happens in Rome. That's the other side of romance mm -hmm. is that we are revealing. I think when I play the song in a romantic way, I am also revealing what's meaningful to me about the song right. rather than showing my prowess 
rather yeah. than, and, and it's interesting because when I chose the song for today, I was like, I have to choose. I won't have time to warm up and I'm kind of stiff. So I'm going to choose something that's easy to play too. But the, but the, you know, we can hide behind our prowess, but as we start actually expressing the music in our own way, we are revealing. And when we're revealing, we're open, that's open to, it's just more, well, everything's open to criticism, but, but the criticism can be more about us. Well, the criticism goes straight into the heart then. If one has truly expressed something personal right, and, um, and there's a criticism, it, it hits at a different level than if someone is presenting a finished product, so to speak. And so, you know, having that resilience of, you know, knowing that our expression isn't going to resonate with everybody and that's okay. Some people will like it. Some people won't. That's okay. You know, there'll be enough people who like it. I mean, it, it's just, well, uh, it's easy to stay <laughs> until you get the dagger. <laughs> But as we're talking, I was remembering that when I was writing these lyrics, I didn't, I never acknowledged that these were my lyrics. And I, I, I always pretended that this was just how the song, this is how I heard the song. And I'm realizing now, as you say this, that it was because of the vulnerability of them that I was hiding from that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let me, cause we've got it. Oh, I haven't looked at this yet. Um, I love how the harp is like a fourth limb. Yeah, I should read these before I pull them up, but <laughs> but I kind of don't want to because I never know what you're going to say either. Uh, so harp is like a fourth limb for you, an extension of you. Some people talk with their hands. <laughs> you talk with your hands and your harp and your heart. Um, thank you, Radical Riley. I will say that from I've that 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 the you know the fingers give the the harp a voice, and then the harp gives lets the fingers sing. And it, it, it is, it's like a prosthetic for me, uh, the prosthetic, the creative, expressive prosthetic that I was not born with, but that my hands always wanted to speak, always wanted to speak. And to be able to have an instrument that allows that is just, it, it's really wonderful. And, and then to have that instrument be accompanying, meaning supporting my voice is, is really an incredible experience and a romantic experience, I might say. Because this is an experience of oneness. You surrender to the harp and the harp surrenders to you in a sense. And there is a oneness. It is the surrendering that does happen in what is truly love making. It is the surrendering that happens whenever there's a moment of meeting where two people come together and they feel seen and held and safe, even if it's a five second glance. Yes. And, and, the, and the, the safety of a situation in which we can explore. Mm -hmm. And I realized as you were saying that, I was thinking, oh, this is what I teach. When I teach music, what I'm trying to teach is the essence of a structure, the mm -hmm. essence of a piece, like the essence of a piece like this, so that we can then be expressive or we can discover what we want to express through it, rather than being, than stumbling over the technical difficulties of it. Yeah, you know, you often talk about, and, and I'm thinking about structure and the, the string of structure and the strings of passion, right. you know, that those conventional mores we learn, the shoulds, must, and ought tos, all those things are structures that we do need early in life to help us to begin to differentiate our impulses and what's creative and what's destructive, what's going to allow us to move forward in relationship, what's going to stop us. But there comes a point where, again, it becomes too limiting. And what worked when we were three will not work when we're 16 or when we're 25 or when we're 50 or whatever. Oh, not. And so it's in a way it's true with music, isn't it? If you learn the structure, you learn those fundamentals, then there comes a time you let go of those, that you can step outside of it because you have that base to hold you and contain you and support you. Right, and and because uh, the structures can have a lot of details at first, yeah. 
And then as you get more, what I love is finding, well, what's the essence here? What's the essential? And how, how can we get rid of the things that aren't essential so that number one, it's technically more easy because we've taken away all the things other people have imposed on it. And that then we can express out from there. So I'm always teaching like blueprints of music so that you can, or like what I'm teaching, um, I have this free workshop this weekend, which is called Three Secrets of mm -hmm. Lead Sheets. And lead sheets are, a sh they're, they're, they are a, a, an essential, a, a, the essence of a tune. So learning how to use those shortcuts or you, learning how to, um, take those, the simplification of music, and I don't mean the dumbing down of music, the es finding the essential. And as I say that, I'm thinking, Kathleen, you have your essential, you know, it's, it's even... the, right. So that we're both, I noticed that we're both teaching about that essential. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and we're going to have to, I can't believe the time it's gone so quickly today. It's been so <laughs> wonderful, all this engagement. I really love everyone's yeah. comments. You know, I want to talk for a minute about the essentials in reference to how do we romance our life. And if you're interested in my essential embodiment practices, you can go to Inner Divine Spirit and find a link to that. But I want to offer as a takeaway for today for myself and you is that distilling it down to the essentials in our life across the board, then we have to know what is it that our heart really wants. We need to pay attention to and understand our gut reactions to that desire. And then we need to be able to see what our head tells us about it. And when we can bring the head and the gut into alignment with the heart's desire, we can transform our life into the romantic expression of the oneness, the connection we desire, whether it's with ourself, it's with another person, it's with our instrument, or it's with a song like Cindy, Cindy. I love that. And I love that, you know, that focus on the heart's desire as the center of it. And as you were saying that, I was thinking, okay, so how can we do that with music? And to know that there are many, many parts of music, but when you're playing a song, you don't have to play all of it. You can find the part that you love. Like when I sing, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish to be able to find that one part that you love. And then the other thing that I say all the time is instead of just shifting everything and moving around, you know, explore, explore the harmonies and try keeping one thing the same. Because when we keep that one thing the same, that's like that connection to our heart. And you begin to feel the other things spinning around it slowly and so so to be able to 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 go in and find those words that you love the most or that part that you love the most and give yourself permission to play it over and over and over until it it until it breaks your heart or opens your heart either one and then and then those other parts can connect Kathleen Thank you so much. And everyone who was here and your comments, thank you so much for this conversation and how it's expanding. And um, just thank you. And I look forward to seeing everyone next week as well. Thanks, Kathleen. Bye-bye.